Hello everyone. Welcome to Neat Login. Today's topic is the human reproduction, chapter 3 from plus 2. This chapter's weightage in the Neat is including the reproduction and the reproductive health. It is five questions. You know, in the plus 2, the chapter starts from the case of the reproduction, two chapters from the case of the botany part, the reproduction in plants and the two chapters of human related. One is human reproduction, other is the reproductive health. And this chapter plays a major role in the neat weightage like what five questions totally from both this reproduction and the reproductive health. So how far it is important is you can know by this. In the human reproduction chapter, the, there you will come across a lot of terminology and the related definitions. If you once you come to know, you can understand what it means, it will be helpful you a lot in going through this chapter. Moving on to the topics of this chapter. What are the topics we are going to discuss in this chapter are the male reproductive system, the female reproductive system, gametogenesis, menstruation cycle, fertilization and the implantation and the next is the pregnancy and embryonic development and the last but not the least is the parturition and lactation. These are the topics which we are going to discuss in detail in this chapter. So let's start with each and every topic in detail and let's hope that you'll enjoy a lot by understanding this. You know well Human beings are highly evolved species of the kingdom Animalia. Coming to the reproductive part, human beings are sexually reproducing organisms and you know pretty well that they show higher degree of evolution in their reproductive ability, they are viviparous. They can give birth to the egg ones. You know it's a higher degree of evolution when compared to the oviparous that is egg laying animals. And moreover, you know well, human beings show sexual dimorphism. There is a clear cut demarcation between the male and the female individuals. In their reproductive organs, in their, I mean the primary sexual characters, in their secondary sexual characters and their ducts and their relative glands. So there is a lot of differences by which we can say easily the male and the female demarcation. Moving on to the what are the reproductive events will going to happen in the human reproduction. The very first one we are talking about here it is gametogenesis, the formation of gametes. What are gametes? Gametes are nothing but the cells by which the sexually reproducing organisms produce with the help of their gonads where these gametes will play a role in making the organism to show their viviparity or maybe the oviparity. And here gametogenesis is nothing but the formation of gametes. The ova in the female, the sperms in the male. Spermatogenesis, the formation of sperms. Oogenesis, the formation of ova. So that's called as a gametogenesis. And these reproductive events can take place in the organism. I mean to specifically speaking about the human beings after the puberty stage. You know what is the puberty stage? It happens after the puberty stage where the gonads and all because of the higher increase, higher concentration, more levels of the hormones will make that organism to become successful reproductive ability will be possible in these animals. The successive rate increases due to the increase of these hormones. So that is about this gametogenesis, formation of gametes. And moving on to the next one that is insemination. Obviously, you come across several times saying that the ova, the female gametes are the non-motile and the male gametes are the motile, or motile ones. And the introduction of the semen, I mean the male gametes, the sperms into the female reproductive tract is called as a insemination. Increase of semen into the female reproductive tract. Anyway, we are going to discuss in detail all these things. And the next one is fertilization. What is fertilization? The union of gametes is called as fertilization. 
and these fertilization will result in the formation of a zygote you know every organism starts its life with a, a deployed a single celled organism called as a zygote i am talking about the sexually reproducing organisms because you won't come across the union of gametes in asexual reproducing organisms the gametes will fuse the fusion of gametes is possible we'll discuss in the sexually reproducing organisms the formation of gametes itself the prime role where these gametes fuse in order to form that organism sexually reproducing human beings are sexually reproducing organisms and you know when compared to the asexual reproduction sexual reproduction is obviously the higher degree of evolution as i said even in the case of their ability of giving organisms i mean their offsprings viviparous also and the fertilization results in the formation of zygote and zygote is a resultant after fertilization where every organism starts its life with a single cell called as zygote which is a diploid and moving on to the next one that is implantation after the formation of a zygote guys the zygote will develops into a stage called as a blastocyst stage actually the blastocyst stage is the one it is a stage of implantation here the blastocyst stage is a stage of implantation in case of the mammals in this stage it is going to attach to the wall of uterus and that attachment of this blastocyst to the wall of uterus is called as a implantation and the very next is the gestation as these are the viviparous organisms the entire embryonic development it happens in the womb of the mother in the uterus of the mother hence is called as gestation the intrauterine period which is helpful for the organism in order to grow fully because as is a viviparous it give birth to the egg one which is well developed i mean highly developed which looks like a adult with all the developed characters i mean with all the developed organs and all we can say why i am specifying this word actually the class mammalia itself classified actually there are three but there is no need of in going on that detailed account there are prototherians metatherians and eutherians prototherians are the egg laying mammals metatherians will give immature egg ones though they are viviparous but eutherians where human being also belongs to the eutheria they can give rise to the case of highly developed egg ones where the entire development will takes place on the uterus during the gestation period moving on to the last but not the least is a parturition giving birth to the egg one the process of giving birth to the egg one is called as parturition you come across the micturition the release of urine i mean the uh, elimination of urine discharge of urine out is called as micturition but here it is parturition giving birth to the egg one and whether this reproductive events are same in the case of the males and females no because if you talk about in the case of the males the spermatogenesis phenomenon money the formation of sperms is almost same throughout their life even sperms can produce in old people old men also almost we can say throughout the life the spermatogenesis can happen in the case of the males but whereas if you talk about the female human beings in the case of the females the development i mean the formation of their ova is going to be ceased is going to be stopped naturally it's going to be cessated i mean stops after the menopause stage when they enter into the menopause stage means what here it is is nothing but we can say that here after 50 years of age though it depends and differs from one to other woman but probably average you can say after 50 years of age there is no chance of the development the formation of ova so by this we can say that there is a difference in the events of reproduction of male and the female so let's start with the next topic of this human reproduction